lecture 6 in the last lecture we study about the functions and regulation of thyroid hormones today we'll continue with uh, a mention of anti thyroid substances Antithyroid substances include thiocyanide ions, propylthiouracil iodides, and some of the goitrogens. <coughs> the thiocyanides basically <coughs> cause competitive inhibition of iodide transport into the cell that is inhibition of the iodide trapping mechanism so uh, basically uh, it is the same pump that transports iodide ions uh, that can also pump these thiocyanate ions or other ions like perchlorate or nitrate ions. Uh, next uh, substance is propyl thiouracil. The propyl thiouracil prevents the formation of uh, thyroid hormones uh, by blocking the peroxidase enzyme that is required for the iodination of tyrosine and uh, therefore it blocks the coupling of the two iodinated tyrosines as we studied in uh, in the synthesis of the thyroid hormones uh, the role of iodides is interesting because when the iodides are present in the blood in high concentration they lead to a decrease in most of the activities of the thyroid gland they reduce the rate of iodide trapping and uh, they also cause the uh, endocytosis of the colloid to decrease uh, which is required for the release of the thyroid hormones so they also decrease the size of the thyroid gland and uh, especially its blood supply the goitrogens are substances that produce goiter. Goiter means uh, an increase in the size of the thyroid gland. So these may be present in addition to the substances already mentioned. They may increase and they may include the uh, vegetables like turnips, uh, that has a goitrogenic effect. We'll study the mechanism of this uh, increase in the size of the thyroid gland when we study the thyroid disorders. Next we move on to the diseases of thyroid gland hyperthyroidism the clinical forms of hyperthyroidism include Graves disease toxic 
nodular goiter which is due to thyroid or toxic adenoma subacute thyroiditis and increased exogenous intake of thyroid hormone so these are different clinical forms in which the hyperthyroidism may present clinically now out of these graves disease is a very important disease which causes hyperthyroidism i repeat again graves disease is a very important disease that can cause hyperthyroidism graves disease is an autoimmune disease in which auto antibodies called thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins tsis they are formed against the tsh receptor so you by now you should be or must be familiar what is tsh tsh is thyroid stimulating hormone so these antibodies are formed against the receptor of tsh and this receptor is present in the thyroid gland cells the cuboidal epithelial cells lining the follicles of the thyroid gland and this causes this these thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins globulins they cause a continual activation of the cyclic amp system and therefore a large amounts of thyroid hormones are produced so when there is an increase in the production of thyroid hormones this leads to a feedback negative feedback suppression of thyroid stimulating hormone by the anterior pituitary gland next disorder which can produce hyperthyroidism is the thyroid uh, adenoma now it's a localized tumor called adenoma that can develop in the thyroid tissue so this localized tumor it secretes large quantities of thyroid hormone and this is not uh, autoimmune the secretory function in the remainder of the thyroid gland is inhibited because uh, that's a normal tissue and uh, when the adenoma is producing large quantities of thyroid hormone that is pressing the tsh production from the anterior pituitary gland and therefore there is no tsh to act on the normal thyroid gland which is present uh, in surrounding this tumor now coming to the features of hyperthyroidism now these features are actually the effects of thyroid hormone on all the body tissues when there is an increase concentration of thyroid hormones so we the patient may present with a high state of excitability because of the effect on the central nervous system there is intolerance to heat because of high metabolism increase sweating mild to extreme weight loss diarrhea 
because of increased gastrointestinal motility and secretions. Muscle weakness. So, when there is increased concentration of thyroid hormones acting on the muscle for a longer period of time, this can cause the breakdown of the muscle proteins. There may be nervousness or other psychic disorders. If the patient is extremely fatigued but unable to go to sleep. There are tremors of the hands and these are very fine tremors and can be seen if the patient is asked to extend his or her hands. Then there is a very peculiar condition which is called exophthalmos. Now this exophthalmos is a protrusion, protrusion of the eyeballs so, and, the mo and most people with hyperthyroidism develop some degree of this protrusion of the eyeballs and this condition is called exophthalmos. You can see in this figure the protrusion of the eyes. So this is exophthalmos. The cause of the exophthalmos or the protruding eyes is erymatous swelling of retro orbital tissues and secondly degenerative changes in the extraocular muscles. Now in most patients immunoglobulins may also be present which react with the eye muscles. Now sometimes this can lead to drying of the uh, cornea because of inability of the eyelids to close the exophthalmo uh, the, the, the eyes eyeballs and therefore the epithelial surfaces of the eyes may become dry and irritated and there may be ulceration of the cornea the treatment of hyper Thyroidism include the surgical removal of thyroid gland and uh, before the surgery the patient is prepared by administering propyl thyroidacil for several weeks until the basal metabolic rate of the patient returns to normal then high concentrations of iodides are administered about one to week immediately before operation to cause the gland uh, to decrease its size and uh, for decreasing its blood supply In addition, a radioactive iodine in the dose of 5 millicuries may also be given to the patient. Hypothyroidism. The clinical forms of hypothyroidism include endemic colloid goiters, idiopathic non-toxic colloid goiters, thyroiditis,
a very important condition in this hypothyroidism is the endemic colloid goiter. Endemic colloid goiter is caused by the dietary iodide deficiency. Now how the iodide deficiency cause or leads to the goiter which is basically an increase in thyroid gland size. The mechanism is as follows that uh, lack of iodine prevents production of both thyroxine and triiodothyronine. So there is no hormone available to inhibit the production of the thyroid stimulating hormone by the anterior pituitary which causes the pituitary to secrete more and more quantities of TSH or thyrotropin. So the thyrotropin then stimulates the thyroid cells to secrete large amounts of thyroglobulin colloid into the follicles and the gland keeps on growing large and larger in size. So this is the mechanism of production of increase in the size of thyroid gland which is called goiter by the dietary iodide deficiency. Other form of hypothyroidism is the idiopathic non-toxic colloid goiter. So goiter can occur in people who do not have iodide, iodine deficiency. So there is mild thyroiditis present which means the inflammation of the thyroid gland and this formation of nodules in the thyroid gland. So some portions of the thyroid gland are growing because of the effect of thyroid stimulating hormone while other portions are being destroyed because of the thyroiditis. So this is idiopathic non-toxic colloid goiter. Other causes of colloid goiter include abnormalities like deficient iodide trapping mechanism, deficient peroxidase system, deficient coupling of iodinated tyrosines in the thyroglobulin molecule and deficiency of the deiodinase enzyme. So all these abnormalities may lead to the development of colloid goiter. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a very famous presentation of hypothyroidism and basically it is a chronic autoimmune thyroiditis in which antibodies are formed against thyroglobulin and peroxidase enzyme. Now we study the physiological characteristics of hypothyroidism and basically these are because of the decreased amount of thyroid hormones uh, and uh, the deficiency of thyroid hormones lead to these uh, features like uh, fatigue and uh, laziness, somnolence which means increased sleepiness, muscular sluggishness, effects on the cardiovascular system include slowed heart rate, decreased cardiac output, 
decreased blood volume, an increase in the body weight, constipation, and mental sluggishness. In addition to the uh, already mentioned practice, this atherosclerosis may develop in patients with long standing hyper hypothyroidism because decreased thyroid hormones cause an increase in the plasma cholesterol and triglycerides. Then in severe cases there may be development of uh, an edematous appearance throughout the body of patients, adult patients called mixed edema. So there is swelling of whole of the body and the patient has a frog-like husky voice. So we will continue with the mixed edema in the next lecture and uh, there is a question that you have to answer in your assignment. Enumerate the clinical features of hyperthyroidism followed by two MCQs. Iodination of tyrosine is blocked by the five options. And second MCQ, engraved disease antibodies are formed against which of these 